There is something about caves and crevices and cavities beneath the ground that um, brings out uh, the gloom in the human soul. The Mayans called uh, the underground uh, Shibelba, or the place of fear, over which ruled the various Mayan gods, uh, people such as uh, the pus demon and the flying scab and the skull staff, who turned people into, into skeletons, or the jaundice demon who was responsible for the swelling of bodies. Um, it would appear that in any underground there's a fair degree of bones and remnants. This is an example of um, a gentleman that we worked with in Hamilton during the clearing of the Olmstead Caves um, near the Nexus Cave System. Uh, he's got a skull in his hand, not an unusual thing to find in an Ontario cave. And uh, what follows is a short video of, of a skull that I just found recently. Um, so. Driving around uh, in cave likely areas, uh, cavers will always be rubbernecking the, uh, the landscape, uh, looking for likely cave features. One good example would be sinkholes, disappearing rivers and streams. Um, in this particular case, we're driving around this morning on a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Uh, cars going by and sure enough, we see a, a system of cracks out in this field. So we come down to investigate, and we're looking at the crack here. As you can see, um, it's actually something that a person might might fit into uh, with a little bit of effort. Um, but what what really seems quite interesting here is this. Any idea what this might be? Have a look. Sadly, that was a a deer of some type. Some real nice looking antlers on it. Um, Obviously fell down the hole here, got himself wedged and just hung there and uh, probably starved or suffocated. So he's still about another 10 to 15 feet beneath this skull uh, down to uh, the bottom. So we're going to investigate this area and uh, see what else we can see. Um, see if there are any other interesting cracks. And here, of course, is the man himself, Jeff Collins. There is something about cave exploration that allows the adventurer to pretty well bridge the gap between the living and the dead. Um, here in Tulum, uh, in this particular cenote, uh, Dos Hoyos, a uh, picture I took of, of cave divers. Um, traveling deeper into the tunnel system, uh, into Shabelva, as you will. Uh, the traditional entrance to Shabelva was said to be a cave near, near Copan in Guatemala, and the underworld, the Mayan underworld, being ruled over by the 12 Mayan death gods. Well, cave diving is absolutely an activity whereby you are indeed flipping along close to the edge of your mortality. Um, bones and all sorts of artifacts can be found underground and again a constant reminder um, further north where, where I happen to live in Ontario some just fantastic places to, to really um, experience the underworld uh, possibly not on the grand scale that you would have in Mexico but indeed I still find it uh, very satisfying. In a system known as, as the G Lake Caves um, this image shows several cavers that I was on a trip with descending a shaft that we call the bone pit uh, down into a, a tunnel system uh, beneath the, the dollar stone of the area um, and at the bottom of this particular shaft um, in, in the darkness is a place where, where the animals have fallen down through this th down the shaft um, into a, a big heap of bones and and other animals that have died in the past and uh, down here you will find uh, you know beaver teeth mandibles molars ribs skulls all manner of of remains from creatures who have toppled down the shaft and been unable to get back out uh, as you can probably um, imagine or have seen in the previous image this shaft bells out so i mean by their death they have bought uh, nutrient uh, down into the underground where the various bacteria and cave creatures can exist on, on their death, bringing them life. 
So back to Mexico on the edges of uh, Dos Hoyos, the cenote, you can see the, the roots hanging down from the surface into the underworld, uh, the living reaching down into the dead. And um, up at uh, G Lake, we have this gnarly cedar root reaching down into the, into the tunnels beneath the surface. So this is, a, this is really a concluding image of mine here, um, some form of fungi growing from, from a dead piece of organic matter. Uh, this particular image, or one very similar to it, was actually um, posted on a, a website of a gentleman called Photomat, Creative WordPress, the blogging system that I use. Um, and I think it summarizes what I'm saying here. Death from the surface brings life underground, and in turn there is a connection to the surface again. So unfortunate as it was, with, uh, with the deer that had fallen down that crevasse and died, uh, good would have come of it. Um, it its decaying remains didn't, feed, did not indeed feed the, uh, the underworld creatures, the beetles and the ants and the various worms and, and, and uh, living beings in the underground. So if you're interested in the underworld and the idea of caving, in particular caving in Ontario, um, check out my book. Uh, Caving in Ontario, Exploring Buried Karst by Michael Gordon, or my website, www.rockwatching.wordpress.com.